you covered Robert F. Kennedy's presidential bid. Yes, yes I did, yes I did. <laughs> that was uh, fun for a while. Uh, he was, he was a uh, different kind of candidate and uh, people just, you know, they tugged at him and pulled at him and yanked his arms and pulled his shirt and motorcades and uh, but you know, he brought he brought a passion to presidential politics that hadn't been uh, hadn't been there before. Uh, Gene McCarthy was you know cool and and uh, sort of dyspeptic he was Gene was and I think uh, you know he's. Filled with green bile was Gene McCarthy, uh, but uh, Robert Kennedy was quite different, and uh, and f and f uh, fun to be with, and, uh, uh, and and made fun of himself, which was uh, you know an endearing quality, and I got I got assigned a, 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 to it, and we've been on the been fifteen hours of campaigning, and he was late getting to an airport, I can't remember the airport, and I remember he, he got out of the car and uh, went and, and did the rope line thing along the fence, you know, shaking hands like this. And I was, we hadn't had anything to eat for a while, and I, I wasn't going to do the rope line with him because I'd done it a hundred times, and I just was standing there with my little portable typewriter and my little bag waiting, waiting for him to get on the plane and get out of here. And he finally finished, and he broke off, and he, he saw me standing there, sort of dejected and sloop-shouldered like this. And he walked over and said, Roger, half the trick is to look like you're having fun. <laughs> McCarthy beat him in Oregon uh, because um, the people in Oregon, the voters in Oregon, were you know, satisfied with their lives. Uh, Kennedy's message was, we can do better. And Oregon voters didn't think they could because, you know, they had the ocean and the mountains and the rivers and the green trees and life was really sweet in, in Oregon and, and, and Washington. So Bobby had to win California if he was going to stay in. And uh, I had done uh, at the, the hotel uh, uh, when it was clear that he was going to win California. Uh, then the word went out that he would do uh, the network uh, network interviews with the th you know before he went down into the ballroom with the crowd. So I did my interview. It was a really lively, funny interview, and uh, he admonished me for using words like, uh, "Well, Senator, of course you're going to have to squeeze a lot of Hubert Humphrey's delegates now, aren't you?" And he would. Roger, your language, you know. So it was a side of him that nobody had ever seen. But we got to laughing. And, so uh, 30 minutes later, he goes down into the, into the ballroom and comes out, you know, uh, uh, to take, take the great uh, applause from the crowd. And at that point, um, what's his name? Sirhan Sirhan is somehow finds his way onto the stage and uh, you hear these pops. And I was standing off to the side with, with Mrs. Kennedy, Ethel Kennedy, and suddenly this, this group of men wrestle with Sirhan and they close in around and Ethel, I had to push a couple people aside so she could get in to where he was. And uh, then it was just chaos, just chaos. Uh, and they came and I remember our cameraman just broke down and wept. He'd been with him the whole time, you know, and they got to be almost a family, you know. And so they they took the senator out, and uh, and then we all went over to the, what the hospital was. It's St. Vincent's. I'm not. I don't remember the name of the hospital, but I can remember we were staking out the hospital, and Frank Mankiewicz would come out and give us a, a medical bulletin. And I remember when he came out the last time, and we all knew that this was the announcement. And I remember. We were on a high bank, and I remember slipping and falling down this bank and tearing my my blue serge suit to get down into a position. And he came out to announce that Senator Kennedy had died at 
whatever time it was. And um, this was 68, and we'd just been through one, hadn't we, in 63, is five years later. And Martin Luther King in the middle. He was in 68, too. Huh? He was in 68, too. Yeah, 68. Well, yeah. And I, uh, so, you know, we were live, and, uh, and this is, you know, this is like 12, it must have been 2 o'clock in the morning back east, wasn't it? At least. Uh, but anyway, uh, they said, you got to come to New York immediately because we're going to do a special the next night. So I got on the plane, and I remember unable to talk to the man next to me, and unable to talk to the stewardess, just, you know, just sort of in a catatonic kind of mood about, you know. And I remember getting in the cab and coming in from, I guess, LaGuardia or, or Kennedy, whichever it was, and just wondering how how come New Yorkers are going about life like nothing had happened? Don't they know what's happened? How can they go to work? How can anybody be smiling and, you know, drinking coffee? But that, so the next night we did an hour called Friends of Robert Kennedy and we had, we had uh, Douglas Dillon and we had Bill Walton and we had Peter Edelman and just sitting talking about him which was uh, uh, not scripted, but, uh, you know, almost, uh, I don't want to use the word cath cathartic, but it was helpful to everybody, particularly those men who, uh, you know, must have had a terrible time sitting there trying to talk about the fellow that they'd worked for. Did that interview, that, that last interview that you did with him, did that ever air? Oh, yes, it, it, was, it was, oh, sure, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, it must have been, I'm trying to remember, um, I mean, we must have been going live at the time, and it was, uh, 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 no, it, no, it was on the air, yeah. Uh, 